Hi guys, today we're gonna to get started with creating a table using the TTK Bootstrap library, which is basically a library built on top of Tkinter, but that has uh, some themes and some functionality that represents the Bootstrap library that's originally for web development. So we're gonna create this table here, uh, which is based on a normal Tkinter widget, but has some additional functionality allowing us to search like so. Um, allowing us to display results in a paginated way. Also to do a bunch of other things like sorting, filtering, etc. So in short, this is a pretty powerful way to display data using a tkinter based library. Let's get started. So if you haven't already, you're gonna have to you, you're gonna have to install uh, TTK Bootstrap. So you're gonna do pip install uh, TTK Bootstrap. Um, once you do that, we're gonna do import TTK Bootstrap. Uh, as TK. We're kind of using this as we would normally use tkinter in a regular tkinter application. We're just going to copy that and then we're going to do TTK bootstrap dot table view and import table view. Table view is the name of this widget, which is just built on top of a tree view widget in uh, tkinter. And then we're going to import some constants that allow us to affect uh, the appearance or to uh, alter the appearance of certain aspects of our UI. So we'll do import and then start. So we're just getting a bunch of constants we can use. Now we're going to start this application off with app equals ttk dot window. And we're going to set the theme name to superhero. Now, what's cool about TTK Bootstrap is the documentation is pretty good. You can go to their website, which I'll include a link through in the description. And there's a bunch of different themes you can select for appearance. So light, te light themes, dark themes, I chose the superhero theme, but there's a bunch of others you can choose from. And it's actually gonna be TTK right here. But here we're basically creating the window that acts as a container for the table widget. And we're setting the theme with the theme name attribute or parameter. Once we've done that, we're going to get a list or a data structure containing all of the colors that are part of this theme, like so. We're going to use these later on. Let's go ahead and just show everything else right there. OK. Now, what we want to do, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to specify these columns. And then we're going to go ahead and specify the data that's going to go in our row. So what data is actually going to be displayed in the table. Now we're going to call, we're just going to say columns equals, we're going to create an array with a dictionary, um, with dictionaries inside of it. So the first dictionary we're going to create is we're going to say text uh, license number, which is just matching up to this column right here. So we've got that and that's matching up to this one right here. Um, we're just going to do a comma and then we're going to copy paste that. Our next one's going to be company name and user count for the additional column headings we have right here. Now this just says text uh, followed by the actual text. There are other settings we can use. For example, we can use this one, which is particularly useful in tkinter, um, stretch false. And that basically means that if we change, if we try to resize this window, that uh, the width of these columns will not change. So it creates a fixed width for each of these columns, regardless of the size of the window. Now that kind of brings me to one thing you may have noticed. Um, so I'm actually not writing this in Visual Studio as I normally would. I've had some like strange compatibility issues between specifically the TTK Bootstrap table and uh, my Mac um, OS. Um, I've tried this out in a bunch of other OSs and other people's computers and it's worked. But because of that, I've just decided to write this in REPL IT. Now, this one's gonna be stretch equals false. Um, I guess we'll just specify that for all of them because we really just want a consistent uh, size here for all of our different columns. Um, you're welcome to do whatever you want. Just in this case, uh, we're gonna specify that. Now next, we're gonna specify the actual data that uh, goes into the table, which is either gonna be, let's we'll call that row data. And that's either gonna be a 2D array or an array of tuples. Now in our documentation, so if we go to API right here and we go to table view, notice these are a bunch of different uh, TTK bootstrap specific widgets you can use. 
click on table view right here. Um, we basically have the example that we'll be going through and we're using tuples. So right here, we're gonna have a, an array of tuples and each tuple is going to have all the data for a given row. So for example, the first one's gonna be a123 uh, is eco and then 12 for each of these columns. So first one matches up to the license number, second one matches up to the company name, uh, last one matches up to the user count. So basically the data you put into these tuples is gonna be in the same sequence as your column headings. And we're gonna copy that three times. This piece of data is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna manually add this to the table later. So don't worry about that for now. But we're gonna change this to A136. Uh, I guess that's Kim D Inc. With a user count of 45. And then we're gonna have A158 with Farmading Co. And that's going to have a user count of 36. Now that we've done that, we're ready to go. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out as well is that this doesn't have to necessarily be tuples. So I've changed this so that we just have a 2D array and it still works just fine. Also, we're gonna add commas in here just so we don't throw an error later on. Okay, so that's our data that's going to go into the row. Now what we wanna do is actually create our, um, our table view widget and specify some uh, settings or some attributes. So we're gonna say table equals table view. Uh, we're gonna say master equals app because that's the window that's ultimately going to be the container for this particular widget. Um, app being from right here, TTK window. Uh, then we're going to have call data for the column headings. And we're just gonna say call data equals columns, which matches up to this array right here with our dictionaries. Then we're going to specify our row data. We're gonna say row data equals this right here, row underscore data. Next, we're gonna have paginated equals true. Uh, this setting um, basically activates this functionality right down here where we can display our results in a paginated format, which is particularly useful if we have, you know, if we have more than uh, 10 or 20 records that we wanna display. Uh, next, we're going to have auto fit equals false. Now, all that means is that the size of the column is not gonna change if there is some data in our rows that's larger than the existing column width. So for example, right here, if we had a company name that was really long and was larger in the column width, this is just gonna stay the same width, this column is gonna stay the same width, and it's just gonna cut off that text. So auto fit equals false. We're gonna do searchable equals true. Now searchable equals true um, basically activates this functionality here where we can search through our row data. So we can type in a string and see whether it matches to any, um, any other string in our row data. Next we have boot style equals primary. Uh, that's basically for our UI, just to specify a certain color scheme. And next we have stripe color. So basically stripe color, um, this describes how, our, how each row is gonna look when we actually click on it, right? So this is a little weird. So right here, we're just gonna deselect this one. When we click on this, so normally a row, it kind of alternates between light blue and blue, and we have white text. However, we're gonna specify right here that we're gonna have colors.light. So basically our background is going to come from right here. We're gonna show light colors along with uh, green text. Now basically what that means is that we're going to have a light color, which is this color right here, this grayish color in the background. And our foreground, which is the text is gonna be green. So background is colors.light, foreground, which is the text, is gonna be green. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to position this table element um, in our container window, which is app right here. So let's go down, we're gonna do table.pack. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do fill equals both, basically because we want this to be centered. Uh, expand equals yes. 
and then pad x equals 10, pad y equals 10. Um, actually, I think we're probably going to do expand equals no, because we don't. I'm not really interested in basically expanding this window out. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we're actually we're almost done. What I want to do is I want to show you how to manually add entries or records into our table. So right here, we've already specified these three right here in row data. Okay. Now but we have this sort of like outlier right here. And basically the way that we could add that outside of row data or after creating our table view widget widget is that we can do a uh, table. Again, table is matching up to this widget that we created right here. It's this one right here. We'll do table dot uh, insert row. Uh, end uh, with this end parameter sp specifying that we're adding a value onto the end of the table, or basically it's going to be the last record in our table. So we're going to do end uh, marzal or marzale LLC 26, which doesn't really conform to how it's supposed to be organized, but it's just an example. And once we've done that, we're going to do table.load uh, table data, which effectively just refreshes the table. Rather, it refreshes the data that's in the table. And that's basically going to allow us to insert data into our table. Um, now that we're going to do that, now that we've done that, what I want to do also when I execute my table is I want to basically make sure that the data I intended to go in the table is there. And we're going to do row equals, or we're going to do rows equals table dot table rows. And what this does is this gets all the data from the rows that are already in the table. Now, again, this isn't strictly necessary when creating a table, but I just wanted to show you this functionality. So maybe if you want to modify the data in the table or you have some sort of more unorthodox use, uses of these tables, you know what to do. So once we do that, once you've gotten all the data right here, we can just do print uh, row one to print out the, um, I want to say the second entry and then values. And that's basically everything we need to create this table and to display some additional functionality right here after the table has already been created. We're going to do app.mainloop. And then we're going to run this in REPL IT here just to make sure that everything works and we haven't made any errors. OK, so right here I have import. OK, I have import table view. So I seem to have some kind of syntax error there. Oh, right here, it's got to be from. My bad. From, from. OK, let's fix that. Let's run it again. OK, name TTK is not defined. OK, so I define this as TK, so that's got to be TTK. Cool. OK, we did that. Let's try running it again. OK. Uh, it says has no attribute styles. Okay, so the app has no attribute styles. So I guess I made another mistake right here. This should be app dot style, not styles. All right. Okay, right here it says row not defined. So actually the entire table here seems to work, but on line thirty eight it says row is not defined. So let's go down here and see what's wrong. Okay, so we call this rows. I just wrote row without the S. Go ahead and fix that. OK, cool. Now let's go back and run it. OK, it looks like everything works. And right here, we specified that we would see the second entry in the table. And that's been printed out to our console right here. So mostly we did all right. Had a few errors there that were easily fixable. But that's how you create a, a uh, table in TTK Bootstrap. Um, what's I think what's really useful about this library is that if you do want to do uh, more things with the table or you want to see more functionality related to this, then you can go out and check the documentation for TTK Bootstrap, which is ttkbootstrap.readthedocs.io, which again will be linked in the, in the description. If you want to see more videos on this topic or just videos involving creating GUI applications in Python, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the next video will probably involve how to integrate TTK Bootstrap and PySimple GUI. Have a nice day.